After doing a little bit of research on Eden Zero, I recently discovered that the main character's so-called gravity powers are actually powered by something else. See, in Eden Zero, we're told that Aether powers everything. It's in humans, it's in robots, it's even in the air. By manipulating this Aether, an individual can use one of the many abilities in the story collectively referred to as Aether Gears. But there's a slight problem with that explanation. Say you were in the world of Eden Zero and you wanted to learn an Aether Gear. Your robot grandpa tells you, oh, it's easy, just manipulate your Aether. Your first question is probably going to be like, um, so how do I do that? It's the difference between knowing how to do it and knowing how it actually works. Like, if I told you to throw a punch, you know how to do it by making a fist and moving your arm. If I asked you how that works, the answer would be that your brain sent a signal to your arm muscles through your nervous system. But obviously, ether gears are more than just movement of the muscles. So to understand how ether gears work and what makes Shiki so similar to Aang and Goku, we need to figure out what ether really is. Now, like most anime powers, I'm sure you just assume that it's some kind of energy. But see, energy isn't just energy. In physics, energy is the capacity to do work. But there's different ways to do that. There's kinetic energy, potential energy, thermal energy. You guys all took a basic physics class in school, so I'm sure you know the rest. Point is, energy isn't just energy. And we have to be a bit more specific. To narrow things down, we actually have two videos from MatPat that serve as a great starting point. The first video covers key attacks in Dragon Ball and what they're made of. In Dragon Ball, the character's abilities are powered by Ki, which is obviously borrowed from the real-life concept of Ki or Chi in Eastern philosophy. Now, as MatPat explains, Ki attacks aren't really energy per se because we can actually see them and they behave like matter. As far as which state of matter they're in, it's actually the commonly overlooked fourth state of matter known as plasma. And let me just be clear. Like Aether in Eden Zero, there's different kinds of plasma. In the realm of biology, plasma refers to the liquid inside of your blood. But in the broader realm of physics, plasma essentially refers to gas that has been excited enough that it's gone beyond the state of gas and changes into a completely different state of matter. For example, while most people think it's made of gas, the sun is actually made of plasma. And this is actually in line with the traditional definition of ether, or aether, which in Plato's classic elements is the fifth element that fills the universe. According to scientists, plasma makes up roughly 99% of the universe. So logically, this would mean that ether in Eden Zero is synonymous with plasma in the real world. As far as how the characters concentrate this plasma, it's basically just electricity. By controlling the electricity in their bodies, a character can energize the gas around them and thus concentrate it into a plasma attack. Now, that's Dragon Ball. We need to figure out if this is true for the characters in Eden Zero. The answer is yes. How do we know this? Look back to when we first met Pino. The EMP she uses doesn't stand for Ether Magnetic Pulse or something like that. It stands for Electromagnetic Pulse. And an electromagnetic pulse, in the simplest terms, is the interaction between electric fields and magnetic fields. In other words, you're using really strong electricity to temporarily disrupt other electric currents. So when Pino uses her EMP to disrupt an ether gear, she is really disrupting the electric current that person is using to control their ether. So this tells us that ether, and by extension an ether gear, is in fact dependent on electricity. Like Goku, Shiki is actually controlling the electricity in his body in order to wield his ether gear. But there's one slight difference that prevents this from being a perfect analogy. In Dragon Ball, Ki is just life energy. For example, when Goku uses the spirit bomb, he can only power it from other living beings, not inorganic matter like rocks. But in Eden Zero, it's not just life energy. There is ether that's more like life energy, as evidenced by a certain machine that I won't spoil for newer fans out there. But we can see that there's also different types of inorganic ether, like earth ether. And in chapter 194, we learn that it's theoretically possible for a rock to have an overdrive. If that's not motivation to get up and do something with your life, then I don't know what is. So while the framework in Dragon Ball is a good starting point, it still doesn't capture the whole picture. At this point, we need to ask the narrower question and figure out a. what the connection is between life ether and inorganic ether, 
and b how the characters actually use their electricity to manipulate ether. But before I do that, I want to just give a quick shout out to Javaldo Anderson who commented on my Ethereon video. If you'd like me to share your comment in the next video, then make sure to comment with your thoughts on Ether down below. Now back to what I was saying. The answers to our two questions can be found in the second MatPat video covering waterbending and Avatar. In this video, MatPat notes the connection between waterbending and the moon, and explains that the key to waterbending is a force similar to gravity. Specifically, it's electromagnetism. We already touched on the idea with Pino, but let's make sure we're extra clear about the concept since it can get kind of confusing. With Goku and Shiki, we already established that they can generate an electric current. Goku uses electricity to charge gas, change it into plasma, and then condense that plasma. But in Avatar, it's a bit different. As MatPat explains, waterbenders actually use their electric current to create a magnetic field. When you generate an electric field, that field leads to the creation of a magnetic field due to the flow of electrons from one location to another. They are two separate yet closely linked phenomena, which is what we're talking about when we use the term electromagnetism. So in Avatar, waterbenders aren't just superheating gas with electricity. Instead, they use electricity to create a magnetic field. Now, as Matt Pat points out, water is diamagnetic. In other words, because the electrons in water molecules are evenly paired, magnets actually repel the water molecules instead of attracting them. Which means that waterbending is actually the product of repelling water with a magnetic field. And when you get into the more advanced techniques like ice bending, that's just using the magnetic field to manipulate the water molecules and change them from a liquid to a solid. Now, as far as how the characters do that, it's pretty straightforward. As we can see whenever they're training, the characters in Avatar use electromagnetism through martial arts. Whenever they're bending, it's always done with a punch or a kick or some kind of stance. There is, of course, psychic bending or bending without movement, but that's obviously just the exception. Now, funny enough, this actually directly relates to how Aether Gear seem to work. In Chapter 53, we learn that tying someone's hands prevents them from using their Aether Gear. The characters explain that this is because doing so prevents the user from changing their flow of Aether. But as we can see later on, this doesn't completely prevent the user from generating their abilities. It only restrains them. So the logical conclusion is that, like an avatar, Aether Gears require martial arts or some kind of muscle movement. Which also happens to explain how the characters are able to control electricity. When you move your muscles, it's your brain sending a signal through the nervous system using electricity. So logically speaking, it makes sense that ether gears and water bending are just what happens when you take this one step further. Obviously, this is the part where we acknowledge that this is the product of creative liberty, but it still makes a lot of sense. So as we can see, Eden Zero is a bit more like Avatar. Like we said before, the characters can control plasma like Goku, but the ether they control isn't always in the state of plasma. For example, Homura's ether gear, Soul Sword, condenses her ether into swords. Since those swords don't really behave like solids, liquids, or gases, we can assume that those swords are just condensed plasma, essentially making them lightsabers. That's where you can see something like life ether since it starts and ends with a living being. But then there's the inorganic ether like on Norma. Similar to how rain works, the ether rises to the atmosphere, condenses, and then changes into a solid. So because ether in Eden Zero comes in different shapes and forms, we can assume that it isn't always in one state of matter like plasma. Like waterbenders, the characters just happen to use a particular form of ether based on their different techniques. It gets a bit more complicated when you talk about life ether because although the characters can control electricity, plasma and electricity aren't the same thing. Again, that's where I think Mashima takes a little more creative liberty and we as readers suspend our disbelief just a little bit more. But that's pretty much everything you need to know about Aether Gears. Essentially, the characters are using muscle movement to generate magnetic fields, and they use those magnetic fields to control Aether. Now that we figure that out, Here's so we can get into Shiki's abilities and figure out why they aren't actually gravity abilities at all. I'm gonna say that again, just so we're clear. Gravity Aether has nothing to do with gravity. So far, we've learned that Aether Gears are powered by electromagnetism, allowing the user to attract or repel Aether. 
Obviously, gravity is similar because it creates an attractive force between two objects. But what you might not know is that gravity and electromagnetism are two completely different things. It's not like electric fields and magnetic fields where one leads to the other. Electromagnetism causes a force of attraction through the flow of electrons. Gravity, at least as we currently understand it, is simply the natural force of attraction that exists between two bodies of mass. For example, the Earth has both an electromagnetic field due to the metals in its core, and a gravitational force due to its being a large body of mass. The Moon, on the other hand, only has a gravitational force. The Moon does not have north and south poles like the Earth, meaning it's not magnetic. The two forces are similar in their attractive forces, a similarity described with the term gravito-electromagnetism, but they are completely different. So while Shiki can use electromagnetism, that doesn't necessarily mean that he can control gravity as a result. The reason being that he's creating a magnetic field with electricity. He isn't just attracting other bodies of mass. In theory, Shiki could control gravity by, I don't know, changing the weight of himself or an object, but that's not what we see when he flies. When Shiki flies, it's as if he's falling towards a new center of gravity. If Shiki was just increasing his weight, he'd still be falling towards the same center of gravity. And another way we can prove that this isn't gravity is by looking at Xenolith, the master of gravity ether. When Xenolith meets Shiki, he's able to make Shiki's pain, quote, lighter without actually healing him. Xenolith claims he's essentially making the pain fall away, but that's obviously not possible. Plus, if you placed a gravitational force on someone's brain, all you'd be doing is turning it to mush. But this is possible through the use of electricity. See, the feeling of pain is what happens when your nervous system tells your brain that you've been damaged. And it does that by using electricity. So, in theory, you could use electricity to manipulate the nervous system and hack the messages it sends to your brain, thus making someone's pain feel lighter without actually healing it. The takeaway here is that, while there's no way to explain Shiki's powers with gravity, the way his abilities behave is all too similar to the properties of electromagnetism. The only logical conclusion, then, is that Shiki and all of the other Gravity Ether users can't actually control gravity. Instead, they seem to have heightened versions of the same electromagnetic powers as everyone else that just appear like gravity. So, this pretty much proves what we've been saying about Ether Gears and how they work. Like Goku, the characters are able to control the electricity in their bodies, and like waterbenders, they use that electricity to manipulate the elements around them. While it pretty much makes them real-life wizards and alchemists, these miraculous powers have absolutely nothing to do with gravity, even the ones that are labeled as gravity powers. That's why, even though the story is strongly supported by science, the idea that its main character can control gravity has been a massive lie since the very first chapter. And that's it for this discussion. Obviously, there's a lot of research that went into this video, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Now, if you'd like another video exploring science and manga, then make sure to check out my video on Witch Hat Atelier. In that video, you can see how Witch Hat uses magic to illustrate the inherently creative nature of science. To check that out, just click the link right here. With that out of the way, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.